this unification of language as they, you know, sure. it's imminent. Yeah. Okay. All right. This one here is interesting. I know you've got lots of comments about this one. Um, you know, car dealership guy posted this. There was an interview. This guy named Tasso Romaliotis, founder and CEO of a company called Numa Helps. Numa Helps is an AI company, software company that helps dealerships. But um, at some comments this guy made, I don't know how many, how much of this is actually accurate, but he said a staggering 1,000 improvement in 18 months uh, for Tesla's FSD, leaping from 50 miles per critical incident to 50,000. And then he's just saying with autonomous driving policy that's going to go federal, 2025, 26 could mark a turning point for mobility and new business models. Let's listen into what he said. Do you see any big opportunities that are on the horizon for dealers with respect to service, dealership technology? There's some really amazing progress that's happened, and it's particularly Tesla's FSD. What Elon Musk has effectively invested the market capitalization of Mazda in an AI supercluster to now take all his data and can apply all his data into these AI chips. And what we've seen this year, a Tesla FSD, I think it was 12.1, doing about 50 miles of driving per critical incident. Right. With the technology investment that he's made, that's gone up in the version 13 to 50,000, a thousand X increase. So if you're really at 50,000 miles per critical incident and the super cluster that he's built, which is going to continue to thrive, they think they're going to go five to 10 times by Q2, Q3 of next year. So at that point, you're doing upwards of 600,000 miles driven per critical disengagement. So you're talking about next year, these Tesla Model 3s, of which there's lots of them on the road, are going to be perhaps even safer. I think a lot of people are like, we'll see that when it happens. But with the technology, with the AI chips available, you're now able to see some of these things. The other thing I'll say is that the new administration has stated that autonomous driving policy is going to be a federal one. Combine those two disruptive events, you're looking probably 2026 as a world where we're going to start having these robo-taxi entrepreneurs. Oh, good. Sounds good. Uh, what do you think, Jeff? I couldn't get over how much lower he was sitting than the host. Um <laughs> Hey, sometimes I, we I, said, <laughs> sometimes yeah, we don't say properly. After, after, no, there were, I mean, there was a couple of nuggets in there that I think are important, but it, it felt like there was kind of like mishmashing a lot of different things together. And I should have said this earlier when we talked um, the other day about Morgan Stanley and that upgrade, that wide, you know, $800 uh, on the bull case side and 430 on their main. The other, the two things I talked about there or the, the second thing I wanted to, the two things I wanted to talk about there was one is just Tesla versus everybody else. It looks like the gap is growing. The second thing is this federal autonomous framework right now. It is state driven. And I, I, you know, people, if you've ever developed a product before, but I couldn't imagine if we had to, to, to do, if we had to do smartphone or cell phone certification and we had to do them in all 50 States, and then they all had different requirements we could never, like our supply chain, we could never build anything that potentially would align to all the different requirements to all the different states. And that's why it was important to have, you know, federal regulations for things like the FCC. And it's the same thing for autonomy. I don't, the fact that nothing serious has been out there in scale is the reason why this hasn't bubbled up into be a much bigger issue. But now that Tesla is on the precipice here of having something very serious in scale that can go to all the different states. Now, to, to me, the other part of this, this valuation bump for Tesla, they call it, you know, Trump bump, whatever, Elon's closer to the White House. But it really comes down to, like, what what is him being closer to? What is it actually going to do? Well, I think there's three things. One is just general regulation around AI. Number two, though, I think is is in, in no particular order is this federal autonomous framework and then getting the team together to get that built. Obviously, Elon cannot chair something like that and, you know, and steer it in the direction of, you know, benefiting one thing for another. It's going to benefit everybody that makes an autonomous vehicle, but it'd be the second reason for Elon to be close to the White House. The third one is around the integration of humanoids and, and that, you know, into our daily lives, both starting at the, at the workplace and then moving into the home and then what's the regulatory framework around that so regulatory framework and then deregulation in areas where it was just it made it too difficult to get any products launched i find the benefit of him being closer to the white house far outweighing all the noise that we see 
online in the news headlines. But getting back to what this gentleman was saying, the federal autonomous framework, big nugget. The other thing is the relative improvement in FSD. That is real. As a driver, as somebody who has been driving B11 the year before, 12.1 when it came out in the first quarter, I think, of, la of last year, a year ago, and to now see this progression, the 12.5 in the summer, no nag, and then V13, you've seen that you know it's doing now a much higher percentage. Even these, these low volume offline trackers are showing that a much, much, much higher percentage of drives now are being done uh, with zero intervention. And it's in all the different states too. So I think, you know, if you piece together some of the things, the regulatory framework and the relative improvement in Tesla, I mean, there's, you know, I think there's something really big on the horizon for the company. And I think that's driving a lot of the upgrades. It's certainly not, you know, 496,000 vehicles in Q4. It was impressive as a record quarter for the company, but that's not what's driving all the upgrades. What's driving all the upgrades, I think people are really starting to see the improvement. And then they're seeing this, this convergence of Tesla, Tesla leadership and the government in the regulatory framework. Remember, this was going in the complete opposite direction in the prior administration. In fact, the prior administration, there's things I like that they did, but I mean, just they're going out on this note right now. They're they're trying to, you know, machine gun a bunch of different things out there on AI and, and export restrictions. And just, it's not really well, well thought out. I think we're going into a much better place where AI for the world, we have to figure out how the U.S. is in first place. We have to figure out how we maintain our lead, we maintain our advantage, and and how do we get this out there safely to the population. So, uh, so this guy said a few things. I rate of relative rate improvement, which you've been talking about, is true. But this guy said something like from fifty miles per critical in disengagement to now fifty thousand miles, a thousand improvement. That's not. There was a thousand improvement, but yeah. the, you know, extrapolation of this number. We yeah, I don't know where the numbers. Thousand. Yeah, the numbers aren't officially reported mm -hmm. anywhere, so it's more of this relative improvement. Until, like I said, I've talked about online. There isn't a federal standard for how this is measured. So if you go to one company and say, "Well, they're doing this right now," well, there's not a driver in the seat, and we don't know how they're measuring it. We don't know how they're dealing with teleoperation. We don't know any of this stuff. So I, I, I'm the, the I, I don't want to quote any, I, you can't give, it's, it's literally apples and oranges. It's literally comparing apples and oranges until we get a federal framework. This is how you measure it. This is how the car should report it. Here's the expected variation. Here's the measurement system, you know, in, in, in please sign off on this OEM that you're going to use this measurement system. And oh, by the way, we're going to set up an audit framework so that you signed off. And you say you're going to use this framework. Now we're going to audit your data. So yeah. like all this stuff has to happen. You can't just have companies saying, well, this is what we're doing. This is what we're, it's, it's all over the place and it'll be the wild, wild west until we have this, this framework. Yeah.